Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, we present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon by special recording. Brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. Bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented on Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations, is a listening treat especially designed for the whole family. Several generations have thrilled to the heroic exploits of Rin Tin Tin, the dog that's almost human. And now you can hear his further adventures every Sunday. The new series of Rinty's Adventures are laid in the colorful and legend-filled era of the Pioneer West. His young master is Corporal Rusty, stationed at Fort Apache. During the troublesome post-Civil War era, the Army Cavalry finds plenty of action in keeping under control the renegade Indians who set fire to the early settlers' cabins. And as members of the Fort Apache Cavalry Unit, Corporal Rusty and Rin Tin Tin are engaged in many stirring escapades. Make sure your family enjoys the pleasurable listening on The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented by Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations. Maisie Vale, a rough type of woman from the southwest United States, had gone to the Yukon Territory during the first gold rush. Maisie started a cafe in Selkirk, and though it prospered to a degree that should have satisfied her, she used it as a cover-up and headquarters for a tough gang which brought her added revenue. Maisie considered herself a power in the town, and also considered that anything taken by force without becoming involved with the law was the quickest way to wealth. One day, Maisie sat in her office with two of her henchmen discussing the last job they had pulled. Trouble with you boys is that you seem to be getting careless. What do you mean by that, Maisie? Yeah, yeah. Like Joe says, well, what do you mean? That saw the other night came in here boasting that you didn't get but half his gold. He had the other half hidden in his cabin. But how was we to know that? <laughs> I can see why folks call you Sniffy. You almost drive me loco with that eternal sniffing of yours. Oh, can I help it? Oh, forget that. Like Sniffy just said, Maisie, how are we to know the old goat was holding out on us? You should make it your business to find out. Well, is that all you brought us in here for? To fall us out for not getting the gold he'd hid? No. What I really want to talk about is another job. A big job, Joe. Yeah? What is it? The last boat of the season will be leaving here for the States tomorrow morning. Yeah, sure. What about it? A lot of the prospectors are sending their gold back on that boat. It's been accumulating at the express office. Yeah, that's right. Now, we're going to get that gold. But Maisie, it's risky holding up the express office. It's working too close to home. If the constable gets... Wait a, a minute, office... you dope. I'm not saying you and the others are to go in and rob the express office at all. Then how are we going to get the dust? Easy. Now, here's a plan I have all worked out. I happen to know the express agent, Lynn Selden. Now, he puts all the pokes in a big canvas sack. They're bound at the top with fine wire that's twisted together at the end and then covered with red sealing wax. Yeah. But where do we come in? Now, here's how we do it. I've had Jake and Sam fill a lot of pokes with sand and pack them in a canvas sack. 
Look, there it is in the corner. Mm -hmm. Fixed with the wire and sealing wax, just like the one from the express office. Well, I'll be darned. But how do we change Give me a those... chance to explain, will you? Sure, sure. Go ahead, Maisie. Selden will take the canvas sack on the express buckboard from the office around 9 o'clock tonight. How do you know? The purser from the boat's out front right now. One of the waiters heard him say he had to be at the boat at 9 to take on the express. Well, Selden will drive through that deserted alley between the fishing shacks near the landing to get to the boat. You and Sniffy will be waiting there in the shadows. And what? Use your bandanas for masks and hold them up. See that he gets knocked out. Well, don't you want us to plug him? No, that's the one thing I don't want. Now listen. Jake and Sam will be waiting in the shadows with horses. Take the sack of gold off the buckboard and put the fake one in its place. Then you and Sniffy head back here. Well, what about Jake and Sam? And they'll start a rumpus, shooting their guns and so on. That'll draw a crowd. They'll make out like they drove off the bandits, and when Selden comes to and finds the canvas sack still on the buckboard, they'll be heroes. Gosh, that's sure some plan. Yeah, but when that sack is open in the States, there'll be an investigation, Maisie. Yeah, yeah, but that'll maybe be six weeks or so from now when the boat reaches Seattle. By that time, the crowd in town now will be scattered, and folks will forget what happened. The company will put the blame on young Selden. It'll be up to him to explain his way out. <laughs> By thunder, Maisie, I think it'll work. Sure, sure it will. I've already given instructions to Jake and Sam, so they'll do their part. Well, you can count on us, too. Hmm. If you don't do your part and do it right, you'll be mighty sorry. That's all I got to say. Well, now, let's get out front and have some refreshments. That's an idea. That evening, Lynn Selden was at his cabin on the edge of town having his supper before returning to the express office. His wife, Helen, and their eight-year-old boy, Danny, were at the table with him. I have to go back to the office, you know, Helen, to get that gold aboard the boat tonight. Lynn, that's a big responsibility for you to take alone. You should have a guard along with you. Why don't you stop by and ask the constable? Honey, you have stop a... worrying. I've been putting the gold aboard alone for some time now, and I've never had any trouble. Anyway, it's only a short distance from the office to the boat landing. May I go with you, Papa? May I? Oh, heavens, Danny, you'll be in bed and asleep by the time your father drives to the boat. But I want to see the boat once more before it leaves. Ah, oh, please, Papa, let me go with you. <laughs> Do you think you can stay awake that long, son? Oh, sure, I'll stay awake. I'm... You really aren't thinking of taking him with you. Well, why not, honey? The kid wants to see the boat once more, and it sails at dawn. We'll be back home well before midnight. Well, all right, if you want to be bothered with him. Gee, I won't be a bother, I'm... Okay, son, it's all settled. We'll be leaving in a few minutes for the office. I have a lot to do before we drive to the boat. That night, Danny dozed a bit while his father made out way bills and attended to other office routine. Finally, Lynn awakened the boy, and they started out with a sack of gold for the boat. As the buckboard started through the narrow, darkened alley between the fishing shacks, Lynn saw two figures step out ahead of him. He spoke quickly to Danny. Get under the seat, son. Quick. Hide under the seat. Stop. Stop. Don't go for your gun. We got you covered. Oh, there. Hold. Hold. Get down on that seat. Now, hold on, mister. What's this all about? He said get down. I guess I have to. But your faces are masked with bandanas. You won't get away with that. Hold up. You keep them covered. Sure. I'm ready to plug. This will take care of you. No. Yeah, you went on like a light. Hey, call Jake and Sam. Jake, Sam. Come on. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Go. All right. Change your sacks. Quick. Right. Hurriedly, the men put the sack containing the pokes of sand on the buckboard and transferred the sack of gold dust to the pack horse. Then Joe spoke again. Now, Sniffy and me will get going. As soon as we're out of sight, Jake, you and Sam start a rump, all right? Go on, get going. Get there. Get there. Come on. All right, Sam, let's start things going. Uh, this will bring a crowd in no time. Yeah, shoot a few more times. I'll kneel down beside Selden. Look like I'm trying to help you. Hey, fella. Oh, you all right? Oh, hey, what's going on? Oh. Take it easy, bud. We go more before they got away with anything. How do you feel? Yeah. Oh, this is a little dizzy. I'm all right. Danny. What about Danny? Who? My boy. I have Danny. Danny. Come on, 
For you two, they would have stolen it. Let's see, he's out of here, Pronto. Uh, glad to do it for you, mister. Uh, we got to be getting along. Uh, see you again sometime. Hey, wait a minute. I, I didn't get your names. Oh, they sure did you a good turn, Sheldon. Yeah, they act like it was done every day. Oh, I don't understand. After delivering the sack to the boat and getting a receipt, Lynn Selden and Danny returned to their cabin. As they were about to get ready for bed, someone knocked at the door. I'll go. Well, Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Lynn. Sorry to come here so late, but I just arrived in town. Heard you had some trouble. I want to get the report first hand. Of course. Come in. Thanks. Hi, Sergeant. Hello, Danny. Howdy, there's King. It's nice to see you and King again, Sergeant. I suppose you heard about Lynn's awful experience. Yes, that's why I dropped in so late. Sit down, Sergeant. Thanks. You know, uh... You were fortunate those strangers came along and prevented the robbery, Lynn. I sure was. The crooks had knocked me out. Danny hid under the seat so they didn't see him. Oh, is Danny with you? Uh-huh. I sure was scared, but I kept real quiet. Lynn, was there anything familiar about the two who tried to hold you up? No, they used bandanas, and though it doesn't get very dark here at night, it was shadowy enough to keep me from seeing much. I was kind of upset, too, thinking about them getting the gold and about Danny being with me. Oh, I can understand that. I couldn't see anything from under the seat. But, golly, I could hear them talking. They sure talked tough, too. I hear the ones who scared away the bandits did quite a bit of shooting. I wonder if they wounded either of the crooks. Oh, no, Sergeant Preston. I heard the crooks tell them to start shooting after they left. Danny, what? please, you don't know what you heard. You were too frightened to but be sure. But, I did hear them on it. Now, Danny, let the men talk. It's time you Just were in... Just a minute, Helen. Danny, tell me everything you can remember. Everything you think you heard. Well, one thing I remember. One of the crooks that stopped us made a funny noise all the time. Like this. Danny, are you sure you Helen, aren't imagining... The boy might be able to help us. What else do you remember, Danny? After they hit Pop, I was plenty scared. But I remember one of them called out two names and said, Come on. Then the other two came and they all talked together. Then they took something off the buckboard and put something else on. Hold on. That Hold on, Danny, not so fast, please. You see, the crooks called the other two, and they talked together? Uh-huh. And they took something off the buckboard and put something else on? That's right, Sergeant. Was it a sack they put on? Yeah, that was it. I heard one of them say, change those sacks, but I was afraid to look. Then two of them rode away on horses. Horses? The crooks who held us up were on foot. But then men came with the horses, Papa. Honest. Danny, I... I hope you haven't made all this up, have you? Oh, no. I'm beginning to see the whole idea of Lynn and a plan like that would be too clever for a boy to imagine. What do you mean, Sergeant? You believe that what Danny said... I think or... Danny saved the day. Come on, I want you to go with me to the boat and have that sack opened right away. If what I think is true, then you've been robbed after all. <laughs> continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, wouldn't the kids in your neighborhood wish they were in your shoes if you saw a baseball home run king in person and saw him smash a homer right out of the ballpark? Golly, nothing beats the fun at a ballpark. The game, the crowds, the hot dogs, peanuts, and soda pop. Come on, kids. Come out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. If you are 12 years or younger and can bring a paying adult like mom or dad, grab a pencil and paper quick to get a free baseball ticket, tear off the box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, or Muffet shredded wheat. Send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Go often and see baseball's big hitters in person. For each ticket, send a box top from Quaker puffed wheat or puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets with a guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. We'll give you the address now and again later in the program. Now write it down. Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. 
Sergeant Preston and Lynn left the Selden cabin and went aboard the boat. The night watch aroused the purser, and soon the three men stood in the purser's office with the sack before them. Sergeant Preston and the purser watched as Lynn broke the wax seal and opened the sack. There. Now I'll open one of the pokes. Uh-huh. Holy mackerel. Look, it's filled with sand. Sand? Great day. Danny was right, Lynn. They did change the sacks. This is awful. Not as bad as it would have been if Danny hadn't remembered what happened. If that sand had been opened in the express office in Seattle, you would have been suspected, Lynn. Well, I gave you a receipt for thousands of dollars worth of gold. Well, what Lynn do I... Lynn, give back the receipt, but keep this quiet. I'll let it get out that you know about it. But the boat sails at dawn. It's after midnight now. I'll have to talk with the captain before I leave. Maybe since the cooks will be off guard, we can get that gold back before the boat does sail. Let's go, Lynn. Come along, King. Oh, 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 oh. After leaving the boat, Sergeant Preston and Lynn, followed by King, walked toward the main part of town. I was thinking, Sergeant, maybe you could pick up the trail of those crooks who left with the horses. I went over to where the holdup took place, Lynn, before I came to your cabin. Half the town were all over the place. I spoiled any trail that might have been there. I didn't think of that. But how do you begin? What can you do? The face to open. Do you go there quite often? Quite a bit. Why? And it wouldn't be unusual for you to be seen there. No, once in a while I go there after closing the office. I go there now. Please keep your eyes open for either of the men who pretended to help him. Oh, remember, it was shadowy in the alley where I was stopped, and I was rather dizzy even when they left. I might not be able to recognize them. I'll try anyhow. What's more, remember what Danny said about one of the cooks who made a sniffing zone? The kid might have been imagining that. He's been right so far. Yeah, he has at that. I'll go to the cafe and look around. I'll wait outside with King uh, in the shadows across the street there. If you think you've found one of them, come out and signal me. I'll follow it up from there. All right, Sergeant. I'll do the best I can. A short time later, Lynn sat at the table in the cafe looking over the crowd. Hello, Selden. How about joining you a minute? Good evening, Miss Bell. Glad to have you. I've been here and you had a bit of trouble. That's right. A couple of outlaws tried to hold me up. Oh, then they didn't get anything. Well, I started from the express office with a sack filled with pokes, and I put a sack of pokes aboard the boat, so I... (laughs) In other words, they missed out on getting the gold, huh? You were mighty lucky somebody came along and scared them off. I heard all about it. I say, who were the ones who acted like heroes, you know? No, I don't. They left right away. It was kind of dark. Sure, sure, I know. Uh, Did that gun butt do much damage to your skull? No, it was a glancing blow, I guess. Lucky for me. The back of my head is still sore, though. Yeah, well, that's to be expected. Lucky they didn't put a bullet in you. I guess I am at that. Hey, Maisie, you wanted in your office. Well, I guess I got to be running along. See you later, Selden. Come on. Good night, Miss Vale. Lynn stayed in the cafe for almost an hour. Then he left and joined Sergeant Preston and King in the shadows across the street. He was saying, I guess it's no use, Sergeant. I didn't see anyone who looked familiar that could have been one of the crooks. Too bad. Maisie Vale sat with me for a short time. She asked me about the holdup. <laughs> she seemed quite concerned about whether the gun butt had hurt me much. She asked you, Raz? I mean, she mentioned the gun butt? Mm-hmm. What she actually said was, did that gun butt do much damage to your skull? Now, hold on a minute. How many people knew you'd been struck with the butt of a gun? No one, I guess. And by the time the crowd gathered, I was on my feet and worrying about the gold and Danny. And as far as anyone knew, you could have been knocked down by a man's fist. That's right. I didn't talk about it. It didn't seem important. But it might be important. Only the crooks would know how you'd been knocked down. Strange Maisie should be so definite about it by saying that gun butt. What are you driving at, Sergeant? It's just a thought. Where's Maisie now? In her office. Somebody was waiting there to see her. I'd like to question her. Let's walk around to the back of the cafe. I'll get in to talk to Maisie privately through the back door of the office. Come on, kid. Ooh, oh, oh. Meantime, in Maisie's office, the four members of her gang were having a discussion with her. Maisie, the, uh, the boys think that gold ought to be divided tonight so that uh, 
Well, so Jake and Sam can clear out before morning. Oh, right? yeah. We might be recognized by that express agent. No use taking chances. I happen to know Sergeant Preston came to town tonight, too. So what if he did? There's been a report of an attempted holdup, but that's all. And the crowd that gathered covered the trail like I thought it would. Yeah, but that guy Selden came into the cafe a while ago. If he saw Jake and What if he, he does see him? He thinks they're heroes, don't he? But if he recognizes them when news of the robbery breaks after the boat has reached Seattle, he'll go to the Mounties. And they'll begin to check. That's right. Sam and me want to pull up stakes and get out of here without meeting Selden again. It's safe. Yeah, that's what we want to do. So what's holding you back on digging up the gold now, Maisie? Well, all right. Lock the door, Snippy. Yeah, sure, sure. You get the sack out of that closet over there, Joe. With pleasure. I got it. There's the gold and a lot of it. Both doors are locked now. Okay, open the sack, Joe, and put the pokes of gold dust on my desk. Then we'll divide them up. After I get my half first. Meantime, Sergeant Preston and Lynn, with Yukon King, reach the back door of Maisie's office. I'll knock on the door and go in to talk to Maisie. You wait out here with King, Lynn. Listen. Sounds like some kind of argument going on in the office. Uh Let's move close to the door and listen. Cautiously moving close to the back door of the office, Sergeant Preston and Lynn listen closely. Now listen to me, you lock, but I say go. Say it ain't right, me. Take the chances and you grab everything. You don't know what he means by that. Listen. But like Joe says, we deserve to get as much of that gold as you do. Oh, shut up, you. I'm getting tired of that sniffing of yours anyway. It gets on my nerves. Now, if you don't like working for me, beat it someplace else. I care, Hill. Stick it like I said the Then he's right again, Lynn. That man must be continue our adventure in just a moment. He took a mighty swing at that ball. It's down the right field line into the stands. Oh, it's fouled by a foot. But some boy is sure lucky he caught that ball. What a souvenir. Say, kids, wouldn't you like to be out at the ball game and maybe catch one of those balls? Golly, everything in a baseball game is fun. The crowds, the eats, the excitement. Come out to the ballpark as guest of your favorite team. Yes, see the game free if you are 12 years or younger. Just bring your mom or dad a paying adult. To get a free baseball ticket, send your name and address with a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Get as many tickets as you want. Details are on every ticket. For each ticket, send a box top from Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two tickets at one time with a guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send right away. In a short time, Lynn returned with the constable. Sergeant Preston hurriedly told him what was going on in Maisie's office and then outlined a simple plan. Meantime, Maisie and her gang were still arguing inside. Look, I have this gun in my hand, see? Now, I'm boss here, and I have enough in my safe to send all of you to prison for life. So you better do as I say. you got stuff in your safe like what, for instance? You remember when each of you came to me to join up? Sure, sure. Remember when I had you write down what jobs you pulled here and in the States, telling each of you it was sort of an application? Yeah, I remember. Well, all of you were stupid enough to sign what you wrote and give it to me. Those are regular confessions that would fix you plenty. You wouldn't dare use them. That's right. We could talk plenty. And we would, too. You couldn't prove a thing against me. Every job I lined up for you, you did yourself. Yeah, while you sat around here and raked in the gravy. No, while I sat around here and established an alibi, Joe. Why, if I had a mind to, I could send you all up for murder. 
for killing that old prospector over at Pelly Landing last month. You told us to kill him. Well, who'd believe that? Now, as for this gold, I... Hey. Somebody from the cafe. I'll send him away. Who's there? Constable, Miss Vale. I have to talk to you right away. It's important. Can't it wait till morning? Sorry, but I must see you now. You'll be suspicious if you don't talk to him. Well, if you clear out the back way, then I'll let him in. Get that gold out of sight quick. Right. Put that sack in the closet. Yeah, there. I got it. Up. Hurry up. Vale, this is official business. All right, all right, Constable. I'm coming. Out the back door, boys. Quick. All right, right, quick. Hold it, all of you. You're covered. Sergeant Preston. For a moment, the four men stood crowded in the doorway, looking in surprise at Sergeant Preston. And then Maisie approached. Hey, what's the idea? You have no right to stop these men. They haven't done anything. Get back inside, all of you. Why, uh... No, Joe, hold it. Come on in, Sergeant. If there's something on your mind, maybe we can set you straight. All right, Maisie. Come on, Lynn. Hey, what's that guy Selden coming in with you for? Two guns are better than one in this case. King, standing in the doorway behind Preston, saw Maisie ease her hand from behind her back. The intelligent dog could see the gun in her hand before Preston got a glimpse of it. You won't ever break in here again, you dirty... King sprang at Maisie a split second before the gun went off. And as the bullet sped harmlessly into the ceiling, Maisie fell under the impact of the dog's attack. Maisie fell, terror-stricken. King stood over her, snarling so that she feared to move. Meantime, Joe reached for his gun. Oh, what, that sneaking bounty? Fire! Oh, I'm hit! Jake, get him! Jake lunged for Sergeant oh, Preston, right. but the Mountie sidestepped, oh. at the same time throwing a hard right to the crook's jaw that rocked him on his heels. Sam, another one of the gang, saw Jake go down, and deciding to get away during the excitement, Sam headed for the back door. There he was stopped by Lynn Selden. Stay where you are, you! Preston quickly looked around. He saw that Maisie and three other crooks were taken care of. The fourth, Snippy, cowered behind Maisie's desk, with all thought of resistance gone. Look, look I, I give up. I give up. Come out of there, you. Sure. I'll open the other door now, Sergeant. All right, Lynn. Uh, looks like you got them, Sergeant. Yes, we have everything under control now. Well, King seems to have taken all the fight out of Maisie. Yeah, King saved the Sergeant from Maisie's bullet. Make him go away. Don't, King. Easy, fella. Watch your boy. Look in that closet, Lynn. Right, Sergeant. Oh. Hey, uh, here's the sack of gold. Good. See here, you can't... We heard plenty while we waited outside, Maisie. We arrest you and your gang in the name of the Crown for robbery. Later, I'm sure the additional charge of murder will be made against all of you. I don't savvy how they found out. Out of the mouths of babes come words of wisdom. Or something to that effect, huh, Sergeant? All right, Lynn. They're crazy, downright crazy. Crazy enough to catch all of you red-handed. Well, get them to jail and get the gold to the boat, Lynn. This case is closed. <laughs> You can play a vital part in the defense of our country. Radar is a wonderful invention, but it cannot completely eliminate the chance of foreign aircraft slipping through undetected. To prevent the possibility of such an unwelcome surprise, the Ground Observer Corps has been established. This volunteer organization is composed of civilians who are spending a few hours of their spare time each week sky-watching. They have been taught how to do this job by Air Force personnel who also supervise the observer's time on duty. Today, there are 49 filter centers located in 27 states to which observation posts report. All these centers and posts are manned by volunteers. When the Ground Observer Corps extends its coverage to the rest of the country, many more sky watchers will be needed. If you are a teenager or older, enroll now for service in the Ground Observer Corps in your locality. Write or phone your nearest Civil Defense Center today, or write to Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Help protect your country. This message is brought to you as a public service. <laughs> These 
specially recorded radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you Monday through Friday by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.